Welcome back to Love, Hope, and Faith. I'm here today with Desiree Carnell. Yes. Desiree, you're such a, del a delight. Oh, thank you. Yeah, you're, and Logan was on before, yes. and he was fun, and he goes, you know, my wife would be a really good guest. I'm like, yes, let's get her on. So, yeah. He's sweet. He loves me. Yeah, he does. He, he really does. does. So, in fact, we talked um, with him about, uh, when he was on the show, <coughs> we talked a little bit about a godly marriage. Yes. You know, and so how do you guys, with all the travel, and you both work, I know, full-time jobs and yeah. all that, how do you guys what's a godly marriage look like for you guys you know we have the same goal mm -hmm. and that's to proclaim the message of Jesus so yeah. I think a lot of times that includes a lot of sacrifice yeah on both our parts he's yeah. busy with church and you know he really feels compelled to go yeah and who am I to stop what God has started yes you know mm -hmm. so it's just being supportive of that I feel like for me my number one job is to support my husband mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and you know if Whatever he feels compelled, led by God to do, mm -hmm. I'm there to mm -hmm. be his helpmate. Yeah. And vice versa. I mean, he is so, he allows me a lot of independence and freedom. If I want to travel, he says, go, have fun. That's great. But we have the same goal. Was it always that way? Yeah. Yeah. That's we good. are really mm -hmm. blessed. Mm -hmm. I think God really ordained us to be together and yeah. serve him. Yeah. You know, um, as a child in youth group, well, an, a teenager, um, Mark and Martha Johnson, they were my youth pastors, actually. <laughs> yeah, they're wonderful. Uh, I love yeah, them. they were amazing. And Martha had us write down what we wanted in a future husband. Mm -hmm. And I wrote I, such trivial things besides the fact that I wanted him to love God. I wanted him to have brown hair, blue eyes, play piano. Is that Logan? Yeah, absolutely. Well, I know the brown hair and the blue eyes, but yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And he played piano. And looking back on that, I'm like, Oh my gosh, God. God's so faithful. He is. <laughs> like, just the most trivial things. Yeah, yeah. But we really, I feel, were meant to be together and have this purpose together. Amen. Amen. Yeah. Okay, so <laughs> uh, getting to your call to go yes. and, and make disciples in all nations. So what was your first trip? Where did you go? Our first trip was to Papua New Guinea. Okay. And so he had gone previously. We right? went together our first trip. Oh, okay. Oh, and okay. that was about, I think, in 2005 or six. Okay. I can't remember. And he's gone every year since then, and I've missed a couple. Okay, of good. Years in there. Well, we have some pictures of Papua New Guinea. Okay, yeah. Yeah. Tom, if you could, if you could load those up, it'd be great. Yeah. Um, and we'll show the pictures. There we go. Okay. Well, tell okay. us about this. This is in a rural village called Natanga, mm -hmm. and we uh, were the first light-skinned people to go in, in 50 years. Really? To visit that. There's actually a World War II airplane that's down in the jungle. Wow. An American airplane, and they just um, those kids. There were about 300 kids when I taught there. Mm -hmm. um, they recited probably 50 memory verses. Really? From memory, sang songs, just so happy. How long were you there? We just spent a night in that village, but a lot of the men that live there attend the college Logan teaches at New okay. Guinea. Okay, okay, good. Yeah. So how many hours flight is that? To get to New Guinea is about two days of travel. Wow. Yeah, it's yeah. a lot. It's yeah. about, um, I think, 15 hours to Australia and then a couple after that. So. Okay, so we have more yeah. pictures here. Who's that? That's a little girl in India. That picture's about five years old. She lives in the slums, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. which is on top of the garbage heaps there. Oh and she's gosh. at VBS every year. She just lives in the garbage heap? Yeah, her and her oh. family. But I'm convinced she's a, a believer. Mm -hmm. You see a transformation on her face mm -hmm. over the last, mm -hmm. I saw her this year, mm -hmm. and she has a joy. Okay, next picture. Ah, oh, that's our daughter a few years ago and her little adopted sister in New Guinea. Mm, beautiful. So that's part of those barriers being broken. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. They just see each other. Yeah, exactly. Like you said, just kids. Yep, yeah, they're exactly. Just, kids relate to each other. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, that's in Malawi. Um, I got to go help with a um, summer program for girls. We have some good friends, Luke and Becca Voigt, who are the... Um, Sports Friends Malawi's directors. Okay. So I got to travel there and help with that yeah, last wonder, summer. Wonderful. Yeah. That's awesome. It Do you have good. more? There you go. Uh -huh. That's in Natanga again, and those are just some of the kids that live in that village. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, just precious souls. So when you see, as an example, children living in, in the garbage mm -hmm. dumps, what do, you, what do you think about that? How do you respond to that? What do you, what's your heart cry? <laughs> Um, they have no hope for now as they live there. So my prayer for them, there are a lot of tears shed mm -hmm. with that, that they would know Jesus because mm -hmm. he can provide that peace that mm -hmm. they're not going to have, mm -hmm. but also for a hope in eternity. Mm -hmm. yeah. Like really that's what we have to mm -hmm. offer them mm -hmm. is a hope that 
when this life is over, the next one's going to be yeah. amazing. Yeah, exactly. No more tears. No, no more, more sorrow. No more pain. No more pain. And this yeah. life is but a vapor. It is but exactly. a mist, you know. And exactly. um, we, we, we lose sight of that, I think. Mm -hmm. We're so living in the moment now. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, so we're so in the moment now that we, you know, um, we, we we forget that eternity is eternity, and this is just a passing thing. Exactly. Yeah. I think that we're going to show more pictures okay. of India, which okay. is your most recent trip, right? It the was. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. We'll go ahead and we'll have Tom get those up. Yeah. There we go. Oh, that that's one's... the picture I was talking about. <laughs> that yeah. is the the last day we bring all the classes together. There's three different age groups, and there's over a thousand kids in that picture. Just so excited to learn the Word of God. And you guys singing and doing all the things we do in VBS uh, here? Absolutely. Yeah, the singing, games and crafts, yeah. um, Bible stories, and then a salvation message mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, every day. So you're there with a team of ladies? Yes. Okay. There were six of us from around the United States. Okay, cool. We all meet there. Um, another lady from Amador County went with me and our daughter, okay. um, Allie. Cool. Allie Aber went with us, and she's amazing. Yeah. Just Oh, Allie, I know Allie. Do you yeah, know she's Allie? She's on yeah. the show before, too. Yeah, yeah. She, she came. Yeah, okay, yeah. This was her second year. Oh, she's Allie. great. She oh. is wonderful. She has ladies. so much energy. She does, does she? Yeah. Like, where is it coming from? <laughs> <laughs> that's great. That's yeah. great. We'll yeah. show the rest of the pictures now, too. Yeah. Oh, and that's another slum girl. And um, she was always in the front row just singing and happy. and Just see the light in her eyes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. the, it, really, in India, you can see... Um, when you see the Christians, there is a contrast in their eyes. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I bet. There's a light. Yeah, I bet. Absolutely. Yeah. Oh, it makes me happy. Yeah. Was that it? Is that, I think you sent five. Okay. Yeah. Um, so what, is there danger there for you? You know, there has been talk in past years of, you know, some danger. Mm -hmm. This year they had a lot of men guarding the doors. But, you know, really the risk is for the Christians there. Yeah. I mean, they really do when you convert to Christianity. There is a risk for you. You could lose your family, your jobs. Mm -hmm. So that's my prayers for the people that are there in the trenches. So their main religion is Hinduism, right? Exactly. Yeah. And it's then Muslim is a large population in the city we work in. Okay. And then Christians, a very small minority. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But they are on fire. I bet, you I know, mean, because it's against, it's in that persecution yes. that we are ignited, you know, it's I amazing. think. I mean, I've never been persecuted like they have been, but, or like they are. Yeah. Um, but. You know, yeah, I think that it's almost, I mean, it kind of sounds crazy, and it's easy for me to say because I live in comfort, but yeah. it's almost like a blessing in some weird way to be persecuted. It's not crazy to say, but you know what I mean? It's yeah. just, it's, you know, Paul, look at the Apostle Paul, and look at the blessing yeah. that he is to millions of people as a result of his, you know, persecution and being imprisoned and how he yeah. spoke, how God used him in that. I love know? that story. Yeah. And, yeah. You know, he's able to minister in that moment, mm -hmm, you know, in mm -hmm. the jail. But yeah. I really do think it's an advantage in a certain sense that it's a reality to them. It has to be. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. You, you're laying it all on the line. Exactly. For that. And he, here we just have so much mm -hmm. that sometimes we can lose sight of the of Jesus. Well, I was going to ask you what you think is our biggest dilemma here in America in terms of our faith. We're just such a, I feel sometimes instant gratification, instant answers. You know, we have the internet at the tips mm -hmm. of our hands. Mm -hmm. So we just, I just feel like sometimes God doesn't work fast enough for us. Yeah, yeah, you know? true, yeah. <laughs> We're just like, I want answers now. Yeah. Okay, he's not doing that. I'm going to run here, run there. Yeah. You know, mm -hmm. and there's distractions. Mm -hmm. It's pretty, I mean, they're so, it's so wonderful here. We're there's so many so competing blessed. messages. Yes. You know, and like you said, instant gratification. And, and money. And money and options and choices yes. and freedoms. Too and, many choices. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, exactly, exactly. You know, the grocery store, for example, mm -hmm. we, get, we have everything at our fingertips, but... Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Well, Tom was going to show a few oh. more pictures. I think we have okay. a few more, too, because I want oh. people to really get a picture. Yeah. Those are the little Beautiful colors. guys. Yeah, those are the little ones. So um, that was the grade we teach. So mm -hmm. you're getting to see the kids when they're first coming, mm -hmm. and then we'll get to watch these kids continue through the years. And that was our translator, Mary. We always have a translator. Mm -hmm. And um, that's Michael, our daughter. And you know, that's her holding the baby. That's, yeah. She's always got a baby on her hip. <laughs> Love it. Love babies. <laughs> she really does. Yeah. She'll be a good mom. Yeah, that's wonderful. Yeah. That's wonderful. So do you have a story you can share with us of a real transformation or a, a, a child that converted that, is there anything that comes to mind? There's probably so many, but yeah. is there anything that comes to mind, a testimony? There's actually, this year there, it wasn't a child. It was a woman from the church that we help serve with. That church is so involved in putting the CBS on, it wouldn't mm -hmm. happen mm -hmm. without them. And 
she came up to us. She's a widow, mm -hmm. and she is raising an orphan. Mm -hmm. And I just thought, that is love mm -hmm. in action. Mm -hmm. That's the church. Yes, amen. She's raising this little girl that was abandoned because she was born as a daughter. Mm -hmm. the, the husband said to the wife, if you don't get rid of this child, I'm going to kill you. Oh, my God. The church got wind of that. This widow took that orphan, oh, and she's now... Oh, made in heaven. Oh, I mean... <laughs> yeah. I'm like, oh, and that's just how the church around the world is working. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. You know, there's mm -hmm. such... Their love is strong. Mm -hmm. Amen. Amen. Yeah. You know, the scripture that um, that I shared at the prayer breakfast last mm -hmm. week was Second Chronicles 7, 14. Okay. Um, if my people who are called by my name will humble themselves yeah. and seek my face <laughs> and turn from their evil ways. Uh, humble. <laughs> and, and pray and seek my face and turn. You know, you could repeat that many times. Yeah. Then I will heal their land. You know, yeah. I'm paraphrasing it. But um, is it your experience in other countries that there's a lot of prayer? I mean, how serious are people in other countries about prayer? To tell you, they had us come over one day after the VBS mm -hmm. or CBS to pray over someone's car. Mm -hmm. And it just shows you like, but to them, prayer is a part of everything in their life. Amen. You know, and those streets are dangerous to drive. I'm petrified. I I drive around with my eyes closed half the time. <laughs> you now. drive with your eyes closed? <laughs> <laughs> I ride with my eyes okay. closed. Just specified because there's yeah. a car here, a car here. But that just shows you like in everyday life, yeah. they're praying about everything. And the the last day of the CBS, our kids, I, you know, we really emphasized how they could be missionaries outside their doors. Yes. And the last thing was to pray for your nation. They got on their knees, prayed for their nation, but they also prayed for America. Amen. That America would turn its eyes to Jesus. Amen. Good. That's a great note to end on. We're going to be right back. Stay tuned. Three minutes.